Everybody. Hello to Doom. Hello Brazil. Hello to everybody watching from around the world and tuning in. I'm Chris Hemsworth and I am thrilled to officially welcome you here today. <laughs> Thank you. You know, after, after two years of this global fan event taking place virtually, I know I can speak for all the guests that we have here today who are so excited to be here, to be here live in the city that started it all, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, home to the loudest fans in the world, am I right? 
Thank you so much. I'm going to say thank you to our gracious hosts in this beautiful city. It's been incredible. I love you all. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> and now to kick things off, I want to talk about my brand new film. It's just dropped on Netflix, Extraction 2. And I want to thank, I want to thank all of you sincerely from the bottom of my heart the fans and the support from the first film. We wouldn't be here without you. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. You know, th this, this action-packed sequel to Extraction, it's so massive that I brought someone here to Sao Paulo to help me tell you about it. So please, a warm welcome to my good friend, who's the fearless visionary director of Extraction 2, Sam Hargrave. Wow, this is amazing. This is something else, I gotta say. Thank you so much to everyone who made Extraction such a huge hit on Netflix. What a journey it's been, huh? One hell of a journey. To be here at To Doom for the release of Extraction 2 is something we never expected. But I am so happy to say, Tyler Rake is back! <laughs> back from the dead, resurrected. And I gotta say, I, I am so grateful that we're able to continue this journey. That we began, it was six years ago when we shot the first film. And back then, we set out to create an intense edge of your seat thriller, absolutely loaded with action. But with this new movie, we've taken it to the next level and beyond. And Sam, I gotta tell you, mate, why don't you tell everyone what they're in for? Why don't you tell this beautiful audience what they can expect from our film? Well, after barely surviving the events of the first film, Tyler Rake is back as the Australian Black Ops mercenary tasked with another deadly mission, rescuing the battered family of a ruthless Georgian gangster from a prison where they're being held. And now in this film, we tried to make the action bigger, bolder, and even more intense while diving deeper into the emotional connection between the characters. So, Chris, what was it like for you to step back into the shoes of Tyler Rake. It was amazing. I love this character. I love it the first time I played it. The second time was even more fulfilling. I was so thrilled to step back into this character. Uh, what's really exciting, I'm excited for people to see, is this film, we get to take a closer look into the backstory of Tyler Rake's motives. The first film touches on it, but the second film dives much deeper, so I think you're going to love it. Now, Sam, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> now, th this is the man who created this incredible franchise. Sam, I've got to say, once I saw the film in the post-production period and all the incredible work you've done, you blew me away. This is uh, second to none. You've outdone yourself. And I've got to say thank you, mate. I'm so proud of it. Well, I don't know if you've seen the first film, but in that movie... We did something that we called a one -er, and which is an extended sequence of long shots cut together to appear and be experienced like one long shot. But in this film, we knew we had to top ourselves. So we went out and created a 21 minute one -er that is gonna leave you on the edge of your seats. It's even longer and more complex. We tried to create an immersive experience with a nonstop thrill ride. And after many months of planning and rehearsal and five weeks of shooting, I think we pulled it off. Now, Chris, I think these people might want to know, how is shooting that sequence for you? <laughs> Exhausting, I gotta say. Shooting the one-up, 
uh, most of this film was kind of similar to how the audience may feel when they watch it. It was relentless action thrill ride. We had months and months of rehearsals with myself, stunt performers, Sam, and as I said, we wanted to take it someplace that was unexpected and take ourselves to a place that we had never been before. So it was brutal, it was exhausting, but the most rewarding thing I've ever done. And I think what you're gonna see on screen is something that has a, an authenticity and a grit that is truthful. You know, 95% of what you see in this film was shot in camera on the day. It's not special effects. It's not post-production. Sam had helicopters landing on moving trains. I was on top of the train. We had 400 people in fight sequences. It was the furthest I've ever gone, but the most rewarding. And the reason is, we did it for you guys, the fans, to give you something different. Well, clearly, Tyler is a character people want to see more of. The response from all of you fans has been off the charts. Thank you for all of you who've been flooding our socials with their support. We wouldn't be here without you, so thank you so, so much. I love you all. This is, honestly, this is the, the, the warmest welcome we've ever received. <laughs> You guys are incredible. Now I know, I know we've only just released Extraction 2, but is anyone interested in seeing more of Tyler Rake in the future? Now what, I can't, I can't hear you. More? Maybe? <laughs> Let's hear it, come on. Well, guess what? Because between us, us friends, we're already talking about Extraction 3 Thanks to the response. Thank you, Brazil. Make sure to catch Extraction 2, available on Netflix now. Love you all. You guys are the greatest. First and foremost, give it up for Chris Hemsworth and Sam Hargrave. Oi, primos! Oi, Brasil! Oi, Tudum! I'm Maísa. And I'm Chase Stokes. And I'm Maitre E. Ramakrishnan. And we are so pumped to bring you to Doom 2023, live from Brazil! Woo! Did you guys know this year marks the 10th anniversary of original programming on Netflix? Wow, so just in 10 years, we've gotten shows like Squid Game, Wednesday, and of course, Stranger Things. So we'll be out here all night long with dozens of your favorite Netflix stars to give you drops from some of your favorite Netflix series and movies. Like Elite mm -hmm. and Cobra Kai. Love is Blind. Or a little show called uh, Bridgerton. And we'll even be introducing all new casts of shows and films you haven't seen yet. Like Three Body Problem. Rebel Moon. One Piece. All the light we cannot see. And they clone Tyrone. And speaking of, this night is about to get wild. From a live conversation with the cast of Avatar The Last Airbender. 
into live appearances from some of your favorite on-screen heroes like this guy named Arnold Schwarzenegger. Harry Cavill. Oh. Gal Gadot, Alia Bott, and Jamie Dorman. We even have local guests from right here in Brazil, like Sintonia. And the Archies came all the way from Mumbai. And of course, we wouldn't be here tonight without exclusives from our shows. De volta aos 15. Outer Banks. And never have I ever. There's gonna be so much to watch coming your way. So after the show tonight, be sure to add all your favorite movies and series to your Netflix list. And for those watching at home, please don't go anywhere. And for all of you here in Sao Paulo, let's hear you make some noise! Woo! Muito bem. Without further ado, it's time to get into one of the most popular shows worldwide. Squid, Squid Game! Game. We have some major news about season two of Squid Game, who's returning, what fresh new faces we will get in the arena this time, but first... This global hit is now becoming a reality competition. Brazil, I've heard you're on the edge of your seats, waiting and theorizing about the epic conclusion to you. You know, it's funny, this game. Every year, someone gets hurt. More importantly, you're considering what, or should I say who, Joe will come up against as he finally returns to New York. Though I can't say who just yet, we all know there are many loose ends from Joe's past. The question is, who are you? Obrigado. Truly, to all the fans over all the years, thank you. We would not be here without you. I'll see you at Mooney's. How are we doing? Everything 
going good? Woo! Okay, so can I get some noise from my Elite fans? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have had six seasons of murders, secrets, and steamy, steamy scenes. So, Steven Seven will be no exception, and to let us know what we have to look forward to are the prince and princess of La Encinas, Ivan and Isadora, better known as Andre Lomoglia and Valentina Senare. <laughs> Hello. Wow. Okay, guys, so season six looked mm -hmm. so intense. Um, where does everybody stand going into this new school year? Yes, Chase. Well, once again, we're going to have pretty intense things going on in Las Encinas. But as you may know, you never really know what's going to happen in Elite. But we can promise here that we're going to be a lot of new characters, new story that, that of course, you're going to love. And uh, do we have any new faces showing up at Las Encinas? Yeah, Chase. We have a lot of new faces in this new season. Guys, can I have some noise for Omar, Omar Ayuso? Omar is coming back to Las Encinas. And the amazing Gleb, Fernando, Mirella, Ivan, Maribel Verdú, Leonardo Esbaraglia, and a person that is from Brazil like me. Yeah, actually, I grew from Rio. Anita. You are gonna love each and every one of them, so get ready for what's coming. Yeah. Now, uh, should we give the people what they want? Yeah. Last year's date announcement broke the internet. And this year is just as epic because we're literally going to be falling from heaven. Hope you guys enjoyed the season as much as we did. Yeah, but for us, take it away, Anita. Oi, gente! Olha eu aqui no set de Elite para dizer que a gente vai anunciar quando que começa a nova temporada, a temporada 7, que eu faço parte. Vamos lá? que llega un momento en el que pensás estoy feliz con quien soy estoy contenta con la gente que me rodea Sienten que estamos viviendo solo existiendo. Hey, hello, Dudu. E aí, how are you doing out there? Good? So, if you're like me, you were thrilled by the expansion of the Bridgerverse. New fashion, backstories? Yeah, please. So, it is my greatest honor to present you from the beloved, acclaimed, and instantly iconic show, Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story, <laughs> India Armitifu, and Corey Milchrist, also known as your queen and your king. <laughs> Thank you. 
get off. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Tudo bem? Oi, Brasil! It is, it is so, 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 so great to be here. And uh, it's so exciting to see so many of the best fans. You guys are amazing. Absolutely. And we have all seen your recreations of the My Heart Calls Your Name scene. Absolutely or, hilarious. Yep. Uh, you guys are better actors than us. I think we uh, might not have jobs after this. I hope you're wrong. I hope you're wrong. But seriously, we had such a great time uh, filming that scene and the entire show is filled with just the most wonderful people in the world and that great story from Shonda. And, 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 of course, it wasn't so bad working with this one. Aww. Aww. Thanks, Corey. Uh, I wish I could say the same thing, but you were a nightmare to work with. No, no, no! I'm joking, come back. He was incredible to work with, uh, along with the... We love you! Uh... <laughs> Mwah. Thank you! Oh, you guys, you guys! Um, as I was saying, you what are incredible you to work with. These people are incredible. <laughs> and, um, yeah, we are so fortunate to be here and to, uh, yeah, continue the love. Yeah. Uh, we, we work... <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we just worked so hard to, uh, to add our chapter to the to the Bridgerton story, and so thank you so much for welcoming it with such open arms. Um, it means so much that we created something new that is so exciting to, uh, to the fans of the original Bridgerton series, and... Speaking of the original series, we have a special message for you from the incomparable Golda, Golda Rochebel. Ciao. Thank you, India and Corey, and hello to Doom. Just like you, I'm delighted in watching Queen Charlotte's story unfold. I had such fun making this show, from Shonda Rhimes's magnificent script to Tom Vereker's exquisite storytelling through the lens. We came together as a cast and crew to create something truly magical. As you know, one of my favorite things about working in the Bridgiverse is the balls, the outfits, the dancing, the romance. It's fabulous. And I love that we're able to share that experience with our fans through the immersive Queen's Ball. Here's a taste of the magic. Her Majesty the Queen requests the honor of your presence. to be the event of the season. As you can see, we've hosted these magnificent events all over the world. And, ta-da! I'm pleased to announce we are bringing the experience to Sao Paulo. So lace up your corsets and bring your dancing card. I expect to see you there, Brazil. And now, I know you're desperate to find out what's to come on the newest season of Bridgerton. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you the woman who knows all, Lady Whistledown herself, Nicola Clockland. <laughs> should come here because you make everybody feel like Beyonce. This is the best place. So this is my third to Doom and I am so excited and so honored to be here with you live in Sao Paulo. 
The Bridgerton fandom is one of the most passionate in the world. And I know you are dying to know what's to come in season three. Harlan Stars, I see you! <laughs> so, can Penelope Louise repair their friendship? Is Penelope finally done with yellow dresses? This season, Penelope returns to London, determined to become a new woman with a new independence and a new determination. I can promise you quite the scandalous season, and we cannot wait to take you along for the carriage ride. <laughs> now, dearest viewers, without any further ado, it is finally time for a first look at Bridgerton season three! Okay. We open our season with the Tom's return from the countryside and Penelope gets herself a whole new look. <laughs> Colin Bridgerton has returned from his travels in France, Spain and Italy and his new look is not too bad either. Both Colin and Penn have done some growing up and only time will tell how their friendship will develop. For book fans, you may have an idea. But I can promise you are in for a magical and romantic season. I love you! When there's more to share about pollen season, you will hear it from Lady Whistledown first. Thank you to Doom and thank you Brazil! Obrigada! <laughs> Hello to Doom, Lily here. We are getting ready for season four of Emily in Paris and are so excited to see what's next for Emily. It's safe to say we ended on a dramatic note last season and surprise, it does not end there. So much happened that we just need answers to. Is Alfie still heartbroken? Will Gabrielle get his Michelin star? Michelin star? <laughs> Keep dreaming. Will Mindy and the band go to Eurovision? And what about Camille? Will Sylvie's rekindled love last? And the question on all of our minds, will Emily and Gabrielle finally get together? I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to wait to find out. What I can tell you is that we have more fun, more fashion, and of course, more drama in store for you all. Emily is gonna have to decide if everything she's ever wanted is really what she needs. And while Emily's heart will always remain true to Paris, her life takes some unexpected twists this season. Don't be surprised to find her on a Roman holiday. I'm back. Look, there's nothing like watching a great heist movie. When the perfect plan comes together against all odds, you need skill, ingenuity, and an expert crew who can handle themselves in any situation. Now, to give you a sneak peek of his brand new, high-flying, action-packed heist movie, here's the man with the plan, Kevin Hart. To do. Uh, first off, I just want to say it's so good to see you guys having a good time. Go Netflix. Second off, I want to know if anybody here has any experience pulling off a heist. And I'm talking about like a major, major heist. One, one, that I have a very lucrative proposition attached to. This proposition involves about 500 mil in gold. Yeah, so, going once, going twice. Look, if you do, this is the time to speak up, because I'm trying to put a few more people together to add to my... Hold on, I got another call. One, one second. Kevin, what are you doing? Hey, Google. I'm just browsing Netflix, looking for a new show to binge. What's up with you? I know you're talking to Tadoom. What? That's absurd. It's a live stream, Kevin. 
Everyone can see that you're looking to add members to the crew. Crew? What are you talking about, crew? Oh, cut the crap, Kevin. Why are you shopping for new recruits? Well, I just think we could use a few more top match people, that's all. We don't need anyone else. Our team is solid. We have a pilot, a safe cracker. We can do this. We can do it. Try it with me. Like, puedes meterte una buena hostia. ¿Quieres una buena hostia? A tech wizard. We can block the plane signal, but it looks like a bomb. It really does. An extraction expert. Near the drop site now. A master of disguise. Too much? Uh, are you going for, like, Gandalf the Grey? Or? And, of course, the mastermind. That's you, Kevin. Mastermind? Well, I don't know if I would call myself mastermind, but if you insist, you know, I'll just, I'll let you go with that. Yeah, that's fine. So we're good then? Okay, fine. We're good. And we shouldn't show any more clips. It's supposed to be a secret heist, right? Uh, come on, we can show them a little more. I love every second of this. I can't wait for you guys to meet the whole crew. Lyft is coming to Netflix, January 2024. Hola, Tudun. ¿Cómo estáis? Eh, ¿Qué tal? <risa> eh, sé que estáis ahí en Brasil. No, Brasil. Y tengo un poco de, de, de saudade. Me gustaría estar ahí. Pero no puedo. No puedo. ¿Por qué? Seguro que algunos de los fans de la Casa de Papel ya lo saben. Estamos trabajando en la estela. Pero no hacia el futuro, sino hacia atrás. Berlín. Puro amor, toda ternura. Aparte, soy más joven, estoy más musculado, estoy como más fino. Y estoy pasándomelo en grande, reviviendo mis mejores momentos vitales. Estamos cocinándolo para presentarlo este año, en diciembre de este año. Y ahora, queridos míos, vais a ver unas imágenes de lo que estamos cocinando desde aquí. Un beso. Hay quien dice que la risa es esencial para vivir. Otros eligen el amor. Y otros muchos el dinero. Berlín nunca pensó en elegir. Lo quiere todo. ¿Y qué vamos a robar? La casa de subastas más importante de todo París. Vanessa Lachey. And I'm Nick Lachey, obviously. Obviously. And we're the hosts of Love is Blind here in the U.S. The love experiment where singles find the person they want to spend the rest of their lives with sight unseen. That's right. In the United States, we have helped a number of couples find love in the pots. Mm. I most definitely will. And what's incredible is that this love experiment has been working all around the world. Couples from Japan. Skyma. And Brazil found love in this experiment, got married, and are still together. Hi. Next up, Love is Blind is heading to Sweden and the United Kingdom. But for now, we are excited to give you a sneak peek at some of the hopeful singles who will once again test if love is truly blind. That's right. Here's your first look at Love is Blind, season five. Good. I love your voice already. 
So, um, what are you looking for in a partner? Intelligence, dependability. I'll just be honest with you. I have a track record of crappy relationships, and I just haven't found the right person. It doesn't freak me out. It doesn't scare me at all. <laughs> have you been in long-term relationships? I was actually engaged. I haven't told anyone else here this, but I've actually been married once before. If me and you yeah. can potentially get married, you're not gonna hold anything back from me yeah. and I'm not gonna hold anything back from you. I love you. My mom says like, maybe you're not meant to be in a relationship. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not a perfect person, but I know I deserve love. o amor. Gente, eu amo o amor. Apesar de não ser das mais sortudas. E eu não sei vocês, mas eu tô sentindo, assim, uma vibe de amor em todos os cantos hoje. Inclusive, aqui no Tudum. Vocês estão sentindo também? Ah, é isso mesmo. E se você que tá aqui também acha que o amor pode ser cego, então corre pras cabines de casamento às cegas lá na Bienal. Quem sabe você não encontra o seu amor? Gostaram? So we're halfway through the new season of Love is Blind Brazil, and the hosts Kleber Toledo and my Back to 15 co-star Camila Queiroz are bringing you all the spice this season. I'm so excited to be here to share what's in store for the rest of this season. So far, we've seen more twists and love triangles than ever before. We have like a controversial castmate who thinks he's all that, an odd couple who share the same name, and even a couple who look exactly alike. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? It's impossible to predict who's saying yes and who's saying no. And if this season isn't already full of surprises, the Love is Blind Brazil season three reunion will be live on July 2nd. Uh-huh, that's right. No, it did. Completely unpredictable on Netflix. So stay tuned for more details after the show. But first, Bora lá, gente. Here's a sneak peek at the rest of the season on Love is Blind Brazil. Eu acho que é uma decisão assertiva e nada agora vai me fazer mudar de ideia. Não sei te dizer com toda certeza que pode vir um sim. Então, no altar é que a gente vai saber se é um sim ou se não. Realizada de poder ter vivido um amor aqui dentro, ainda que não tenha um final feliz. Daniel, é de livre e espontânea vontade que você aceita a Daniela como sua legítima esposa? Eu queria falar umas palavrinhas. hot and huge. No, not that. You dirty little wankers. This is the new Netflix Too Hot to Handle mobile game and it's coming hotter than ever. I'll be there to give you advice whenever the drama gets too dramatic. <laughs> Guys, how is this gonna work? Am I going to be in the game? Thing, don't I? Things are about to heat up this summer. Just don't tell Lana.
de volta aos 15. School's back in session. That's right, Tudo. De volta aos 15 is coming back to Netflix for another wild season on July 5th. Dia 5 de julho, hein? But this time, Anita is not alone. We found out at the end of season one that Joel figured out the secret to time travel. And if you thought that one time traveler could throw the past off course, imagine how much trouble two can get into. So get ready to journey back into the mid-2000s for more drama, more crushes, more nostalgia, and a lot of fun. And up next is something I'm very excited about. Cobra Kai is gearing up for a new season. And we're gonna get a glimpse behind the scenes. But first, momento muito especial. I wanna leave you guys with a little treat, a sneak peek at the new season of De Volta aos 15. And good news, you don't even need a VHS player to watch it. Bora assistir? Check it out! Parado com cara de bobo. <coughs> Eu não quero viver minha adolescência de novo. A gente precisa voltar pro presente. Você vai estar em 2021 já já. Que é essa, Anitta? Mas parece que a gente tá conectado agora. Se você viaja no tempo, eu também viajo no tempo. É o reset do mundo invertido. Como que a gente se livra daquele futuro tenebroso? Consertando as coisas por aqui. Na verdade, é a nossa vez de descobrirmos que nós somos. E eu acho que é pra isso que serve a adolescência. Ralph Macchio here with William Zapka, your favorite Valley senseis. The show has meant the world to Ralph and me, and we wouldn't be here without the support of all you diehard fans. That's right, and William here is getting pretty nostalgic. He's already shed a tear or two. Me? No, I don't cry. You're the crier. Yes, yes, I am. It's true, I can't help it. It's just amazing how far we've come from the iconic 80s karate movie to six seasons of a Netflix series. So we got the cast together to give everyone from To Doom a little something extra to show our love. Let's go roll the tape. Where have you been? Oh, hi. How are you? hiding under a table to scare a young boy. Oh my God, good to see you. My bones hurt from training already. This was before Jacob was 20 minutes late. We're gone. Is he on his way to be open? Are you gonna have oh, time to show has a tag. Hey, Billy. Hey, man, do you know what time the table read is tomorrow? Great to have everyone back. So excited to be here. Oh, yeah. I got a really aggressive um, one from Cruel. Perfecto! It's been an awesome long journey, but it is not over yet. Season six could be the biggest, the badassest, most amazing season of Cobra Kai yet. So y'all ready? Get up! Get up! Victorious dojos are immortalized, and for individual competitors, the sky's the limit. But before we throw our hats into the mat, there's one thing we need to do. Decide our dojo name.
Oi, Brasil, tudo bem? I'm back. And this time, with my decent Never Have I Ever co-stars, Jaron Lewison. And Darren Barnett. What's up, Brazil? Well, it is incredible to be here with you guys to celebrate the final season of our show. Truly the end of an iconic era. Iconic is almost an understatement. I mean, I remember that one time Davey had a full-on conversation with a coyote. Yeah, yeah that, yeah, that did happen. And I remember when she demolished everyone at Model UN. Yeah, because she's a freaking genius. <laughs> and you know what? She gave away her one free boink card. Yeah, hell yeah, she did, guys. Come on. Now, there have been so many great moments in this show, so I want to ask both of you what your favorite moments were. My tree? Favorite, favorite moments. I mean, there's been so many amazing moments, like, on set, but also moments like this with the fans. Yeah. Never gets old. I think, uh, <laughs> it's unreal. I'm gonna get sappy. Ooh. I'm gonna, I know, I'm gonna get sappy. My sarcastic self is gonna get sappy for a second. I will never forget meeting you and meeting you on the first day of work. <laughs> That's a pretty great moment. Darren, what about you? Man, it is too hard to choose. You are two of the greatest gifts I've received in my life, knowing you. I've learned from you, you inspire me. But if I'm gonna be real, okay. getting hit by a car was pretty fun. That was so awesome. Yeah. That was pretty yeah. good. <laughs> you know, every time I hear from fans, they're always saying they feel so seen in this show, right? Why do you guys think your characters have been so relatable? My Trey. No, Jaren. <laughs> okay, I'll go. Uh, go ahead. I, I think the reason why Never Have I Ever is so popular is because of the writing, the characters, whether it's Davey, whether it's Paxton, maybe oh. it's Ben. <laughs> there is so much in Never Have I Ever that you can relate to, that you can love, that you can cry, you can laugh, and it's been truly an honor. I mean, I know so many people relate to good old Davey. All of her mess ups, all of her great wins. Mm. I think every character in the show is just so human. And truly, we can all see ourselves in all of those characters. And that's amazing. So, yeah. Okay. Do you hear that? The thing, Davey. Because Team Davey. Woo! Team anyway. Davey strong. Anyway. Each of our characters seem to come kind of full circle from season one to yeah. four. What do you guys feel is, you know, your biggest character moment throughout the show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Darren. All right, let's just talk about climbing through the window and kissing in the rain. That's your biggest moment. No, it's not the biggest moment, but that's a memorable moment. But I think Paxton, you know, realizing he wants to go back to school, find himself, become a teacher, he's growing into himself. You know, he's finding what he loves, and I hope everyone can do that, you know? Very true. Jared? I think Ben's gone through a lot. He went from being a little rude, a little obnoxious at times, to confessing his love to Davey in the end. <laughs> he started out teasing her, and now they're in love. So, pretty big journey, I think. Oh my God, stop. Now, I do want to say Davey is the queen of self-improvement. Mm -hmm. Self-love. <laughs> Give it up for self-love. So, Dave. I want to ask you, what was your favorite standout moment playing Davey? Well, Texas, um, I mean, okay, the Team whole Davey's crowd strong. is chanting Team Davey. How can you pick possibly one moment? <laughs> there are so many standout moments for Davey. That's the reason why so many of us around the world can relate to this young brown girl that just has the whole rest of her life ahead of her. So I think her whole journey has been the standout moment, truly. So, yeah. Okay, one more. One last question. One more. 
What are you guys going to miss most about making the show, and why is it every breathing moment you guys are beside me, every time I'm around you, every time you guys get to look at me, every time you're in a scene with me, every time you just get to talk to me, or I even feel just like that's I think we're getting off topic that, here. I, yeah. Yeah. Just want to put that out there. Yeah. I think that I'm going to miss hanging out with you guys, first yeah. off. I know it's cheesy, but we really have become a family, and... Creating Never Have I Ever, I think, changed my entire life. It's made some of my best friends yeah. and people that will be with me forever. And it's really hard to say goodbye to seeing each other every day, yeah. but we'll be around. And guys, I want you to know, I want you to know, hey! <laughs> Woo! I want you to know that we are actually friends in real life. Like, we, we spend time, we hang out, it's real. Love is real. <laughs> and I've, I, like I've said, I've learned so much from both of you. You guys are so highly intellectual, so talented at what you do, and I love you with all of my heart. I love you too. Love you, bro. I love you guys. All right. To everyone here with us in Brazil, mm. and those at home watching on the live stream, thank you. Hey. Guys, this, this show has meant the absolute world to us, and, and you did that for us. And to know that it had an impact on all of you, I mean, it is seriously more than we could have ever, ever asked for. So, for the last time, here is a final farewell from the cast of never, never have I ever. ever. Brazil, amamos vocês muito. Obrigado. Goodbye. For now. Now, this is our last night together, so we need to grab this party by the balls and squeeze every last drop of fun out of it. I hear it, it was an unsuccessful metaphor. <laughs> hey gods, it's Devi Vishal Kumar. You're a favorite Hindu girl in the San Fernando Valley. They had to outlaw extra credit at school because I was doing too much. You know what? Tyra Banks wasn't considered hot in high school either. Here I come! I don't even know what haircut I'm supposed to get. Should I shave one side of my head off like Kristen Stewart? I feel like I'll get cold. As Rhett Butler would say from Gone with the Wind, you should be kids and often and by someone who knows how. Welcome back to the video logs of Jaren and Darren. I'd really, really like a boyfriend. Let's go throw the best three-person rager this valley's ever seen. But not some nerd from one of my AP classes. Oh, did she tell you I totally melted her with my sick climate change resolution? I just want him to be a stone-cold hottie who could rock me all night long. Yeah, maybe I do like being bad. This morning, I really just want to say thank you. I feel really grateful. I have this awesome life full of dope people who care about me and who love me. Anyway. I love you guys. Also, wouldn't be mad if you equally distributed my freshman 15 between my boobs and my ass.
long time no see, right? <laughs> okay, guys, whoa, whoa, whoa! Never have I ever been so pumped and just wanted to time travel to the 60s, pop some burgers and shakes after watching a teaser. But since you and I can't go to Riverdale, I've invited our friends over. So please help me welcome all the way from India, the Archies. Zoya Akhtar. Give it up real loud, guys, because we love South Asian excellence, the Archies. Thank you for all the love, Brazil, and everyone watching online. We will see you very soon, only on Netflix. Brown. And I'm Kizzy Adol. We play Tara and Darcy in Heartstopper. We can't wait for you to see season two. And just for you, Lucky Lot at Tadum. And for those streaming it at home. We've got an exclusive look at the opening of episode one. But that's not all. Stick around because for the first time, we're also revealing the names for all eight episodes. Enjoy! And don't forget, Heartstopper is back on August the 3rd, only on Netflix.
Okay. Based on the Pulitzer Prize-winning novel, All the Light We Cannot See is a limited series set during World War II that will premiere on Netflix November 2nd. Here to tell us more are Aria Mieloberti and Lewis Hoffman. Hello! Are you all having a great time? I think we are. Yeah, we are. Oh, thank you mm. for having us. Mail! What an honor to be here and be welcomed by all of you in Brazil. It's crazy. series, All the Light We Cannot See, has been a labor of love from the very moment we started working on it. And we are so, so, so excited to share with each and every one of you. <laughs> um. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Um, tell them about it, tell them yeah, about uh, it, tell uh, them about it. Okay, so yeah. the series, All the Light We Cannot See, it follows Marie-Law and Vanna, two characters on opposite sides of a catastrophic conflict who share a secret connection that will become a beacon of hope in the darkest of times. And when I first read the book, it's probably like 2015, 2016, a couple years after it came out, I instantly connected to the character of Marie Laure, even though we're really different. And... <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I'm a fan first. I would be right there with all of you or at home watching. And it was my very first role, my very first audition, my first time acting. So to be here with you guys on a project I love, thank you, thank you. I am pinching myself. <laughs> Um, so filming this series has actually been like no other experience. It was exceptional, extraordinary from the locations to the sets and to the awe-inspiring performances of Mark Ruffalo yes. and Hugh Laurie. Yes. And we, we were so thrilled to work with yes. both of them. And uh, we also had a lot of fun tormenting them on set, making yeah. fun of them, just making jokes Same. about them. Imitating them. Which they yeah. loved, they I think. Loved, they they loved absolutely it, loved that. I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I think so. I'm pretty sure. So. Um. so. <laughs> we do have something very, very special for all of you. Thank you for being such wonderful hosts. And without... Thank you so, so Thank much. You. Thank you very, very much. Without further ado... <laughs> without further ado, please let us present to you a very special look at all the light we cannot see! Thank you so much! This voice I listen to on the radio. And I will never know who she is. Wherever in the world you are, I 
pray that the signal from this radio is reaching you. If you can hear me, remember. Darkness lasts, Darkness lasts not, not even you. for one second. When you turn on the light. Bonjour à tous. Comme vous le savez, la partie 3 de Lupin arrivera le 5 octobre. Je sais que c'est long. Alors je vous ai volé un extrait. Je vais vous le montrer maintenant. Je vous laisse le regarder, mais vous ne m'avez pas vu. sur les toits proches de la place Vendôme. Attendez, c'est Hassan Diop. On a perdu la trace du véhicule qui l'a embarqué. C'est sûrement lui. Il s'enfuit. Je suis en train de le perdre. On envoie les renforts. So next up, we have a sneak peek of the highly anticipated new series from the creators of Game of Thrones, Three Body Problem. Here to kick off uh, what you're going to be seeing, please welcome Jess Hong and Benedict Wong. an outside force manipulating events on Earth. What would it do to the fabric of our society? How would you react? <gasps> Inspired? I <laughs> Inspired by the internationally celebrated book trilogy, Three Body Problem chronicles humanity's response to its gravest threat. It's a thrilling and epic story about what happens when reality on Earth starts to break down. Oh yeah, a story about human connection, investigative mysteries, earth-shattering discoveries, and much, much more. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get through this. Settle. We're so honored to present this 
very first look at a show all of us have worked so hard on. So we have worked so, so hard. Oh, my God. Yeah. Without further ado, this is Three Body Problem. Woo! As children, we fear the dark. Anything might be out there. The unknown troubles us. There are those who say we should not inquire too closely into who else might be living in that darkness. Better not to know. Continue to search. Life looks for life. Wow, that was epic. All right, so let's give it up for the series stars. Benedict Wong, Jess Hong, Giovanna Depo, Alex Sharp, and John Bradley. That was so cool. Right? Um, what do you guys think of the teaser? Brazil! <laughs> Você está um maravilhoso hoje. <laughs> this, uh, that was the first time I saw that, and my mind is totally blown. Right. Unbelievable. It's crazy, they really played into all the mysteries of the series. It's uh, like all of the clues, there's so many clues in that short sequence. It was For really cool. real? Yeah, I mean, it, it, I think like a great trailer should. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. John Bradley! Sorry, John. John Bradley! John Bradley! John Bradley! John Bradley! <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Oh, that was so sweet. So, as, as I was saying, it's uh, it, uh, like, like a good trailer should. I think, I think it, it asks more questions than it answers. <laughs> and hopefully, sort of gets people thinking. And believe it or not, that was just a tiny little part of what our show is about, believe it or not. So, what was it like to collaborate with executive producers David Benioff, D.B. Weiss, and, and Alexander Wu? I mean, John, this is a Game of Thrones reunion for you. It was a little Game of Thrones reunion. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, Game of Thrones. Heard of Game of Thrones? I think they remember, yeah. That was, <laughs> maybe. That was, a, that was a great experience. It was 10 years of my life, but working with them again this time was even more incredible this time around. You know, it's so wild. David, Dan, and Alex really made a unique show. They had a really incredibly unique vision, and it's just really an honor. I mean, I, I was blown away when I first saw it, when I first read it, as I'm sure you guys were. Yeah. And it's just an honor just to be a part of this amazing thing that they, they brought to life. It's yeah. so cool. And so, um, what can you tell us about your characters? Oh, well, okay. So we play, us four, we play a group of 
brilliant scientists who are racing against time to unravel uh, an otherworldly mystery before potentially catastrophic consequences. And uh, I'm playing an intelligence officer. Yeah. Yeah, you heard it. Uh, and I'm, uh, investiga I'm investigating the implications of what these scientists are after. <laughs> Oh, yeah. making it. <laughs> okay, so in the world of this show, people obsessively play a certain VR game. Um, what is the significance of this game? Well, that's a really great question, but I'm afraid that you're going to have to wait a little bit longer <laughs> for more details about the, uh, the VR game. But what I can say is that the, the scope and scale of the game in our show is innovative in a way that I've never, ever seen before. Okay, so I have one final question for you guys. Um, what are you most excited for these lovely people to see in the series? Oh, most excited. Uh, I'm excited for Brazil to see it. And I'm excited for the world to see it. I think Benioff, Weiss and Wu have made something like nothing you have ever seen before. Yeah. For real, you guys, it's, it's a wild ride that you're not going to be able to stop thinking or talking about, believe me. <laughs> wow. Um, that sounds epic. Uh, everybody, please make sure to watch Three Body Problem when it debuts January 2024. Thanks for joining us at To Do. Okay, 수고하십니다. 생일 축하해. 너도 나한테 반하지 마. 
Guys, it's such an honor to be here with all of you in person and virtually for those of you watching around the world. After two incredible seasons of The Witcher, we're excited to finally share season three with you this summer. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for joining us in Brazil to talk about season three of The Witcher. Wow. Geralt, Yennefer, Siri, and Yaskia are finally reunited this season. And I'm so excited for the fans to see what's in store from the Beltane Festival, to an unmissable fight at Sherawed, to Ciri and Geralt fighting an Aishna monster on a boat, and an eventful conclave at the ball. <laughs> Plus, we have even more monster action, and we'll find out who the real monsters are. Freya, tell us about your highlight highlights from shooting season three. <laughs> Well, we've covered all the seasons through the shoot from the snowy mountains of Slovenia to the scorching desert of Morocco and the rainy shores of Wales. It was, it was pretty cool to shoot in such extraordinary locations. I would say one of the biggest highlights for me, though, was the action scenes and getting to be a witcher, even though technically Siri is not actually a witcher. I absolutely loved all of my fight scenes, especially on the ferry boat. Is it? Oh, I'm sorry. What news do you have for our wonderful to do more audience, Joey? Bom dia, Brasil. We love you so much. There is so much to tell you. We can tell you that the stakes are higher than ever this season. We love you! I can reveal that I come face to face with my rival. Boo. My infamous rival, Valdo Marx, on a boat to Thaned this season. There is a very shocking death in store, and you, for those of you who've not read the books, are going to be blown away by this season's big bad. I suppose we should talk to Henry? I mean, maybe? Final season with us, Henry. Goodness me, thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> thank you. I, I really feel the love, and I love you guys too. It's so wonderful to be here. But I'm going to talk about what it was like filming my final season, and I actually just want to talk about my co stars here because. Once again, it was such a pleasure and an honor to be working with you guys. You guys bring so much nuance and detail to these characters, which are often at risk of being oversimplified. And what you guys have done with the characters has involved work, care, and effort. And believe me, working with you guys was the biggest pleasure. So, uh, <laughs> I just want to say I'm going to miss you. 
I'm going to miss you very much. Well, our time is almost up. And we, of course... <laughs> we, of course, cannot ignore that this is your last season with us, Henry. From us, from everyone here, apparently. We want to thank you so, so much for your incredible contribution to The Witcher across three seasons. We are gonna miss you, and we love you. Thank you, thank you, Joey. Thank you, Andy, thank you, Freya. And uh, thank you to all of you here, and to everyone at home as well. You guys are all amazing. Now, please enjoy one of the many epic moments from The Witcher Season 3. Good night! Sintra, alone at last. Well, not quite. I've brought more friends this time. Last time I beat you with my wits, this time you mean my magic. I like my odds. I like our odds better! This is too easy! is out of her depth. <laughs>
All right, listen up to Doom. John Boyega here with Tiana Paris. From Netflix's new film, They Clone Tyrone. And you guys, we have got a sneak peek of our new movie coming up right now. Now, now, look, prepare yourselves. What you're about to see might not make any damn sense. OK, and look, look, we can't say much more, because when it comes to government conspiracies, oh, you never know who's listening or watching. Wait, wait, TTT, look, look, look at this. Uh-oh, uh-oh, John. Is it me, or does this guy look identical to you? All right, let me tell you something. He may look identical to me, but he can't match this drip. Ooh, and that's some drip! <laughs> Wait, what the hell? OK, all right, John, why don't you tell him the details so we can get the hell up out of here? All right, look, they clone Tyrone follows an unlikely trio that uncovers some freaky government experiments happening in their neighborhood. Cloning, mind control, and other nefarious business. Oh, you name it, and they're doing it. Okay. All right. What, 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 what's the name of that uh, Jordan Peele movie again? Oh yeah. Nope. Oh, no. I got to go. We about to go. Right, let's get out of here. Ciao, Brazil. Let's roll the trailer. Everything okay in there, baby? I'm just an average man with an average life. Where the money at? I'm an entrepreneur. I work in the spirit of the pimp game. You know your girl gotta know what's going on in these streets. That's the car right there. Shit, they got an elevator in this bitch. Slick, come on. That make your spider senses tingle. What kind of shit is this? Don't let the back door hit you. Uh, we gotta, we gotta go. I don't know what that was, but that wasn't me. Somebody is conducting experiments on us. Oh. You keep your pimp hand raised and be willing to protect the ones you love by any means necessary. I ain't scared. I'm a dope boy, remember? Excuse me, kind sir, but if you could pull me to the elevator that leads down to the freaky laboratory, I'll be out your atmosphere. Let's get it, man. We're on the scene trying to figure out what has happened. Hey, this shit fucked up. They out here cloning this. What the fuck going on in this bitch? That's right. That is the prevailing theory. Tell me, is it just a Julio, estrenamos A Través del Mar en días, ya, ya, horas. Ya, ya, y no tenemos el nombre de la tercera película, ya lo sé. Mm, no, sé. no, y mira, la gente del Tudum ya está aquí y nos hemos comprometido, ¿sabes? Y... A este le he dado vueltas, creo que está muy bien. ¿Qué te parece? ¿En serio? No sé, propon algo. A Través de tu puerta, A Través de tus besos. Mm, me gusta. A Través de las sombras. Y A Través de el miedo. Eh, del futuro. Es del engaño. <risa> Los sueños. <risa> A través del tiempo. No, tiempo es lo que se nos agota. ¡Ya te <risa> vale, vale. ¡Venga! Oh. ¿Ya está? ¿Qué?
Brazil, how are we doing tonight? Woo! To do them, let me hear ya! To the left side, how we feeling, how we feeling? Mm -hmm. To the right, how we doing? My lovely people in the middle, how are we? Woo! Wow, this is unreal. Oh my God, we've heard some, from so many iconic shows. You, Bridgerton, Love is Blind, Squid Game, but... Hold on. Hold on. I think it's what you guys have all been waiting for. You wanna, uh, you wanna talk about a little show called Outer Banks? Officially back in the Outer Banks, getting ready to go back into production on season four. And I gotta be honest, I do have the jet lag to prove it. Um, fun fact from the Outer Banks set all the way to Sao Paulo. Not a direct flight. Oh, but that flight had me thinking about how insane season three was. You guys remember that little season? Little uh, Poglandia. Pope and Cleo. Rafe's still crazy as ever. And how about JJ and Q? You know, I love working on this show. There's so many incredible people behind the scenes who make this happen. But my absolute favorite thing about Outer Banks is you guys our fans. Honestly, I'm convinced we have the best fans out of any show on this entire planet. Let me hear you. You guys are, are seriously the greatest. And so while we're still ramping up for season four, we wanted to say thank you to our incredible fans with a little sneak peek of the Pogues back in action as we get ready to embark onto season four. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for loving the show. I love you. I love you so, so, so much. All right, how about we roll this clip? I'm Diana Agron. And I'm Bobby Luna. We are part of the cast of the new Netflix series. It was made in Mexico and it's called The Chosen One. Which follows the story of my character, Jody. Who's my son and comes to discover that he has some very familiar superpowers. Right, Bobby? Right, but nothing is ever what it seems. And tonight, for the first time, live from Brazil, we want to give you a first look into this exciting series. Are you ready? People are always going to be looking for us. I'm just trying to keep you safe.
Water, earth, fire, air, bending in the name of both good and evil. Sound familiar? Well, Avatar The Last Airbender is coming to Netflix in a live action series. But you guys already knew that. Aang, Katara, Sokka, Zuko, and even Appa. Yeah, Appa, guys, Appa. <laughs> are back for a brand new take on the most legendary stories of our time. For the first time ever, I have the immense privilege to please welcome the cast of Avatar The Last Airbender. Ian Ousley. Dallas Lou. And last but certainly not least, Gordon Cormier. These guys are truly the sweetest souls, and it has been a pleasure to get to know these guys. So we cannot wait for you to hear from them. Gyoan Dio, without spoiling things for the fans, what are you most excited for the fans to see? I am really excited for fans to see. Um, I think the bending and the FX is going to be really cool. I've only got to see like one finished scene with the FX, but it was so cool, and I can't wait to see the whole series done. I know everybody's working really hard to make it the best that it can be. Um, another personal favorite of mine is episode five. Um, I think it was my favorite when I read it, and as soon as I read it, I couldn't wait to film it. And just the characters go through a lot of different things, and they, they see their situation through, through different perspectives, and I just can't wait for you guys to see that. It's gonna be great. I'm so excited for episode five. Ian, this was a massive production over many, many months, almost like a year, right? Almost what, a year. Yeah. What was one of your favorite memories from the whole experience? <laughs> um, oh my gosh, we made so many memories together, honestly. Like, it's like you said, we, we worked together and lived together for like almost a year creating this awesome show. Um, yeah, I just love these guys. But some of the uh, memories I would have to say, uh, is haircut day, where we like really got to transform into the characters for the first time. Uh, that day was, uh, was a little easier for some than others, but uh, uh, another thing that was like a huge moment for me uh, was getting to hold and unsheath my boomerang for the first time. <laughs> that was amazing. A cool personal uh, thing for me was getting to work with actors that I was fans of beforehand, like Danny Pudi uh, from Community. Uh, he'll be playing the Mechanist, so super excited for that. But if I had to choose one, if I had to choose one really quick, um, it would have to be getting to meet and hang out with my favorite character for the first time, which is Appa. <laughs> and getting to live out my dream of flying through the sky with my wolf tail, wolf tail in the wind. Let's be real, you were scared. Come on I was now. so scared. <laughs> I was very scared. Appa had no face. Fair enough. Dallas, as a young actor, how did you find stepping into this huge production? What was that like? Did your fellow Fire Nation actors, like Daniel Day Kim or Paul Sun Hyung Lee, like give you any advice? Like, they're legends. How must have that been? So before I get started, yay galera! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> okay, um, to answer your question, um, this is such a beloved universe. So I wanted to make sure that not only am I living up to the expectations of our supporters, but I'm also living up to the expectations of myself. Um, so I found that stepping through my love for the series, uh, Prince Zuzu and his phenomenal haircut. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as many of you know, most of Zuko's journey is accompanied by Uncle Iroh. And therefore, I'm 
spent almost every day with Paul Sian Hung Lee on set. Um, and by the way, I think he is the perfect Uncle Iroh. There isn't anyone who could have done a better job than him. Um, <laughs> but I received advice probably on the daily about anything that you can think of from what it means to be a leader or how to present yourself as a professional um, on set. Uh, he's a, a real life Uncle Iroh to me now. Um, and Daniel Day Kim, he has the real life presence of Fire Lord Ozai. <laughs> the day he walked on set, he was so intimidating, I knew he was the Fire Lord. And I think everyone can agree on that. Um, but what I received from him was validation. He made me fell, feel like um, I belong to be working alongside these amazing people. Yeah, you more than deserve to be here on the stage working you, alongside these lovely thank people, you. okay? You are our Prince Zuko, thank period. <laughs> All right, last but not least. Yeah, I know, right? We're gonna hear from oh, Aang himself. Yeah. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah, yeah. hype it up. Yeah. Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, soak it in. Deserve it. Soak it in. Gordon, what does it mean to be a part of this such beloved story? You are our avatar. Okay, well, uh, that's a pretty big question. But uh, with this, I'm going to use it as an opportunity to talk a little bit more about our show. So, Avatar The Last Airbender live action. I feel like it's gonna bring like everything you know and love about the original series back to life. <laughs> and uh, hopefully just bring a bunch of new fans that have never heard the show before into this universe. And to me, that's pretty exciting. I mean, I'm a fan of the show personally, and I'm just excited for this as you guys are. So uh, with that, who is ready for the first look at our characters? We couldn't hear you, come on! Little louder, Let's go! Guys. Yeah, let them know. Okay, uh, okay, I think they're ready, I think they're ready. I think we're good, I think we're good. <laughs> I think we're good. Let's take a look. Okay. Okay, guys, no joke, that's like also the first time I got to see it, because I guarantee you, if I saw that like during rehearsals, I would have leaked this on Twitter. So please take all the pictures of these lovely human beings and put it on Twitter, because oh my God, let's hear it one more time for the cast of Avatar, The Last Airbender. Make today's event last all year at Tadoom.com. Netflix's official home for fandom. This is so exciting. News, interviews, videos, and more. Go behind the street at Tadoom.com. Especialmente nessa cidade que a gente ama tanto. Então faz barulho pra São Paulo aí, família! É! 
Bom, todo mundo aqui, né, espero que tenha assistido. A gente sabe que a última temporada de Sintonia teve um final chocante. É, eu acho é. que vocês ficaram com muitas dúvidas, né, do que aconteceu, certo? Tipo, o que aconteceu com o Dono? O que será? Será que ele tá bem? Será que ele ficou bem dessa? E é o seguinte, a resposta é sim, o Dono tá bem, família. É! <risos> Ele tá ótimo, vocês vão ver ele muito ainda, certo? Na nova temporada, que lança dia 25 de julho, só na Netflix, é lógico. Chega! <risos> Bom, e antes da gente ir embora, a gente tem uma surpresinha pra vocês. Segura essa! Tamo junto, Falou, galera! Falou, família! <risos> Muita dificuldade nós passou Todo dia na estrada que Deus planejou Sei que é difícil, mas acredito no amor Vim mostrar pro mundo aonde a favela chegou Esses caras é opressor Onde já se viu, dá tiro, é trabalhador Eu sou pelo funk, eu sei que eu não sou doutor Longe de engravatado, sou mais um batalhador E por favor, me perdoe se hoje é sucesso, nós já passou da labuta Eu caio, eu confesso que eu levanto e vou pra luta Perdoe meus pecados pra eu sobreviver Por favor, me perdoe Sei que hoje é diferente, eu penso mais pra frente Eu quero paz pra minha quebrada Que se não fosse nós, ela já tava abandonada as traças A dificuldade eu fiz de motivação A volta por cima se tornou inspiração Tentaram me derrubar, mas nada me faltará Muitos querem meu lugar, mas é Deus que dá o dom I'm Jenna Ortega. And I'm Emma. I'm Joy. And I'm Hunter, and we're from the cast of Wednesday. Wednesday season two is being worked on right now, and the storyline is so top secret, even we don't know what's gonna happen. Breathe a word of this to anyone, and I will end you. So in the meantime, we're gonna go through some of the best fan theories. Morning. There are season one spoilers ahead. So tell us everything. After Crackstone is defeated, we see his ring fall to the ground. Did someone pick it up? And could that person inherit Crackstone's powers? Ah! Things always crawling around. Maybe he picks it up. I think we should keep an eye out for Eugene. I do think he would want to claim some sort of vengeance on anybody who has ever bullied him. Since Wednesday defeated the Hyde's master, Miss Thornhill slash Laurel Gates, has Wednesday become the new Hyde master? We see Wednesday drive past Tyler, and in that very moment, Tyler starts to transform into the Hyde. Could this mean that Wednesday has some sort of power over him? I've always thought it would be really, really interesting if Wednesday had a monster for a pet. I'm down. Bow down to Jenna. <laughs> Wednesday would probably come up with something horrible for me to do. <laughs> As we know, Professor Weems is a shapeshifter. In episode eight, Weems gets stabbed and is presumed dead. But we never see her funeral. Later on, we see Lurch with seemingly different eye color than we first saw him in episode one. What if that's a clue that Weems is alive, but in the form of Lurch? It makes sense. That's really it's a great cool. if I don't see your eyes, like, you know, the go dead. Your soul leave your body, yeah. Exactly, you know? <laughs> this theory speculates that season two will introduce a new member of the Adams family. This? Is? True. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's one of the great Adams family mysteries. I would love to see cousin it. Grandma. I want grandma mom too. Careful what you wish for. Those are some amazing theories. Did we miss any? Tell us your theories and reactions in the comments. Now if you'll excuse me, I have some homework I need to finish. Everybody, how are we doing? Brazil, I cannot 
believe that I get to introduce the next trio. We have one of the most iconic filmmakers of all time, the director behind the legendary films such as 300, Man of Steel, and Army of the Dead, here with his producer and star of his newest film, massive, massive film, coming to Netflix in December. Get ready, because this thing's gonna blow your mind. Here are Zack Snyder, Deborah Snyder, and Sofia Boutella. Thank you, Chase. And thank you to them. It's awesome to be here. Talk about Rebel Moon a little bit. Hello, Brazil! We are so happy to be back in Brazil because you guys are some of the best fans in the world. Oh, look at that. It's almost like being on set. Oh, wow, look at that. Huge LED. <laughs> Sophia, actually, tell us a little bit about what it's to be on the actual set of Rebel Moon. Yes, well, not only did I have the chance to work with Zach, who's an incredibly talented, passionate, fun, and enthusiastic director, yeah, <laughs> but I had the chance to work with a wildly talented cast on a story that Zach has been working on for over 20 years. Yes, that has so much humanity, that is so relatable, even considering all the fantasy and the magic to it. We had the chance to develop our characters with incredible teams in costume and makeup that made this process fun and exciting. I also had the chance to immerse myself into sets that were real, live, and gigantic. All these aspects combined only encouraged and elevated our performances to tell the amazing story to the best of our ability. Okay, Zach. Tell us, tell everyone a little bit about how this film came to be and why it's so special to you. Hey guys. Uh, so uh, I've been working on this story for quite a while. It's uh, about uh, a group of farmers on the edge of the galaxy that get visited by the armies of the mother world, which are the bad guys. And the, uh, the farmers have to decide whether to fight or submit. And um, you know, of course, uh, I don't want to give it all away, but if they had decided to fight, let's say that was an option, uh, they would have to travel around the galaxy to find warriors to fight with them. And so, had us traveling quite a bit. And uh, Debbie, my incredible wife and producing partner, uh, tell us a little bit about what that might have been like making those worlds. Well, I think there is an expectation in a Zack Snyder film to have kick-ass action, amazing visual effects, and extraordinary world building. And Rebel Moon has it all. We worked so hard on building this world that takes you to different planets. There's going to be lots of different creatures. Um, but at its heart, it's still grounded and it's really very much a hero's journey about these broken heroes and they find out who they really are along the way. I have never been part of something quite like this before. The world that Zach has built is so rich and spectacular. And I think we have something to show you guys. Do you want to see a little sneak peek? All right, let's play it. All right, so here we go, a little exclusive behind the scenes, Rebel Moon. Uh, I think I'm supposed to say roll it or something like that, but yeah, roll it! Woo! Thank you, guys! I thought I knew what a big movie was. Until I came onto this. This movie, for me, existed elementally for 20 years. It's a story of a few against many, impossible odds, 
good versus evil. I'm getting a chance to tell a story that I've been thinking about for quite a while. I was really excited about Zach. I just really value and admire his enthusiasm for the craft. I hadn't quite anticipated the physical requirements of this. We had a solid two months of preparing the body to get to that place. I've never trained that much. I mean, it is gargantuan. I just really wanted to make a giant atmospheric and space adventure. It's so, so, so big. So ambitious. We get to traverse the darker corners of this universe. We all have a huge anticipation for this film. It's amazing. Something so powerful that you just want more. And it's only the beginning. Hello, Sao Paulo. It is Admiral Atticus Noble, loyal representative of the slain king in Balisarius, regent of the Imperium. I welcome this planet into his warm embrace. I see you're in the midst of a joyous celebration. However, this event is entirely unsanctioned and unauthorized by the Motherworld. Let this serve as a warning that all future gatherings will be treated as direct acts of rebellion and dealt with swiftly. Anywhere, any moment, the mother world is watching. Have I made myself clear? Good. Is it just me or is anyone else feeling a little piratey? It's time to seek the One Piece! <laughs> Guys, the buzz for this show has been absolutely deafening and it's about to get even louder. So make some noise, bora gritar! <laughs> to the cast of One Piece, Iñaki Godoy, Makenio, Emily Rudd, Jacob Romero Gibson and Taz Skylar! <laughs> Look at you! Wow! Oh my God! <laughs> Obrigado! Oh. You got a straw hat right there! Wow! Wow! Guys, wow! Thank you, thank you, Maisa, <laughs> for this wonderful introduction. Hello, Tudu! <laughs> <laughs> and hello to the fans of One Piece! Uh. Woo! been waiting for this moment for such a long time. <laughs> Guys, so were them. Well, I'm thrilled that the moment has finally arrived, along with your iconic ship, the Going Merry. I know! So kawaii! Look at her! Woo! Oh Woo! <laughs> 
<laughs> One Piece is one of the most talked about adaptations around the world. The excitement is over the top and fans are crazy about seeing these characters finally come to life on Netflix. Iñaki, Emily, how does it feel to be part of something so huge? Me, me first. Um, I have grown up with anime. I've been an anime lover since I was a kid and being a part of One Piece has truly been a dream for me and I, oh God, I don't want to cry. Um, it, this, I feel so lucky to be living my dream and I cannot wait for you guys to see the dream come to life. Let's go! <laughs> guys, this is a dream come true. I am very happy to be here in Brazil. And I know that Luffy is super happy to be here in Brazil too! Yeah! 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 Woo! Makenyu, the world of One Piece is massive and the story spans decades. How would you describe your One Piece in one sentence? I can't even hear the question, guys. I know! You um, <laughs> it's, about, it's about Luffy for a and his journey to finding the biggest treasure in the world, One Piece, with us, Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji. <laughs> hey! And can you each tell us a little bit about your character? Well, I play Monkey D. Luffy. <laughs> A young man with a big dream to sail around the world with his nakamas, find the ultimate treasure, the One Piece, and become... What? The King of the, the Pirates! <laughs> I play Roro no Azuro, a deadly pirate hunter determined to become the world's greatest swordsman. Play Nami. <laughs> She's a clever little cat burglar who's very good with a bow staff. And she's got a couple secrets as well and ends up coming along with these boys and keeping them in line. That's right. <laughs> What's up, I'm Jacob. I play the legendary Captain Usopp. Woo! Yeah! God, Usopp. <laughs> Usopp, Usopp, Usopp! And one day I'm gonna be a brave warrior to see. <laughs> and I'll say just about anything if it helps save the people I care about, you know? Woo! I'm Taz. <laughs> and I play Sanji. A chef with a fierce kick who dreams of finding the old blue! Yeah! Together, we're the Straw Hat Pirates. We travel around the seas searching for the One Piece. And I actually see some Straw Hats here too. So tell me, if you're part of the Straw Hats, can I get a big <laughs> Brazil loves you. But I love Brazil. We, we love, love you, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. We love Brazil. I know that I've said it before, but I'll say it again. <laughs> the fans of One Piece are so incredibly devoted to this epic story. So is there anything you want to say to all the fans of One Piece? Well, um, this story means the world to me. I feel so honored to be your Luffy and to be able to tell this story. Thank you, Brazil, and enjoy the ride. <laughs> and now, we got something really special for everyone here in Brazil and around the world to see. It's never been seen before in public until tonight. We are so excited to unveil the very first look at One Piece. Yeah. 
on behalf of everyone at Netflix, Shueisha, the amazing visionary genius Oda Sensei, and Tomorrow Studios, please, please enjoy this teaser for the One Piece live action. And see you all on the East Blue very soon, starting on August 31st. Roll that clip! Yeah! Enjoy, my friends! Nakama! Let's go! Will you all take a selfie with Gente, us real quick? Selfie, selfie. Eles tinham the pedido de tirar uma, uma foto with com vocês. Say one piece, one piece. Yay! Obrigado. Obrigado. Ever since I was a kid. The sea's been calling. So? I'm setting out to follow my dreams. I'm gonna be king of the pirates. All I need is a loyal crew. And I think... Together we'd make a pretty good team. We're heading up to the Grand Line. treacherous stretch of ocean with bigger islands and bigger pirates. <laughs> Careful with that. I don't work for you. I'm sensing a little bit of tension amongst the crew. Not, Not a, a crew. crew. We haven't sailed together for very long, but I know we've got each other's backs. When fighters call out their finishing moves. No, they don't. Wow, okay, so our next guest needs no introduction. But honestly, I'm, I'm so pumped, I'm gonna introduce him anyways. He is my hero, and he is absolutely yours. Our favorite action star is back. Not only does he have a new Netflix docuseries called Arnold, but he also just released his first TV show ever called FUBAR. Recently appointed also as Netflix's new chief of action officer. He's continuing to crush it, but are we really surprised? Everybody, let's hear it for the man, the myth, the legend, Arnold Schwarzenegger! Hello, Brazil! Thank you, thank you. And thank you, Chase, for the wonderful introduction. And I have to tell you, I always love coming back to Brazil. I have been here, I have been here coming to Brazil for the last 50 years.
Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I've come here to Brazil for the last 50 years. I've been here promoting bodybuilding, promoting my movies, promoting my books, coming here on vacation. I even came to the Amazon, to tour the Amazon with my friend and director James Cameron. And I come here all the time to see all of the fantastic athletes, bodybuilders and fitness women, the world's strongest men and all this at the Arnold's Fitness Festival right here in Brazil. So it's always wonderful to come back here. I have even been at your carnival four times. I'm addicted to Brazil. I love Brazil, but most of all, I love the Brazilian fans. You guys, you guys have the greatest energy. You are so unbelievable, so loyal. I just love you guys. And, and I'm here today for my Netflix show, FUBA. Yes, FUBA. I mean, fans have been asking me for years for another great action comedy. And now, here it is, finally. I couldn't be more thrilled with this film and with this TV series, an eight-episode series. At the best time making FUBA, I tell you, there were lots of laughs and plenty of kick-ass action and fight scenes and shootouts and chase scenes and all of those things. But it is also a story about a family that I think everyone here can relate to, even if you're not a father-daughter kind of a spy duo. I understand that. But the action scenes felt like coming home. I just love the action scenes. But my favorite part of the show is that it felt like some of my favorite action comedies that I've done in my history, where you have big action and big chase scenes, and then right after that, immediately following, is by jokes and by laughter. This is what this show is all about. Action and laughter and comic relief and all of those things. So it has everything in there. Everything. And I tell you, none of this you can do by yourself. I couldn't do this by myself. I couldn't do this alone. I had an amazing, hilarious cast. A fantastic cast. We all became incredibly close on the set. There was this wonderful kind of a chemistry amongst all of us. And it became kind of like family. We had so much fun making this show. I tell you, so I want to say thank you. Thank you to the cast, to the extraordinary cast. Thank you so much to the crew. Thank you so much to Netflix for believing in us. And thank you to the fans for watching it. Watching it here in Brazil and watching it around the world. Thank you so much. And now, now that FUBA is out, we have been in the top five for the last four weeks. Think about that. What a success this show is because of you fans, because you, the fans. And I've been blown away by the love of all of you. It's been an incredible, you know, hearing from all of you and having your support over and over again. And the support of the fans all over the world. You know, I get asked all the time because I'm now, yes, 75 years old. So I get asked all the time, I said, Arnold, you're 75 years old, when are you going to retire? And I say to them, I say, action heroes don't retire, they just reload. We just reload. Today, I'm not just here as an actor, the leading man of FUBA, but I'm also here as Netflix's chief action officer. That's right. And because I'm the chief action officer, I get to announce other projects. There's one thing that I officially want to first of all announce is 
that we are renewing FUBA for another season. That will be a season number two. You know how much I love sequels. I love sequels. So we are back, baby. We are back. It has been really heartwarming to see just how much everyone is loving FUBA. So thank you very much. Now, I can't tell you much about season number two, but what I can tell you is that it will be filled again with action and with comedy and with explosions and with chase scenes and fight scenes and shootouts and all of those kind of things. And maybe even get to the chopper. And now I'm going to go and give you a little bit of sneak preview, a sneak peek into what things are going on behind the scenes. Because sometimes when we do the scenes, it doesn't always end up perfect. The action scenes are not always perfect. Sometimes we make mistakes when we del deliver the lines. So I want to show you a little bit of those bloopers. Let's show them some of the bloopers from behind the scene of FUBA now. And don't worry about it. I will be right back, okay? So watch this video. Why is the safe house directly across the street from the same flea-ridden motel where Diet and I made sweaty Christian love for 12 hours? In Sardovia, Bora Polonia. So, I'm sure it work. Yo, I just heard it felt it. Yep. Nah. Did you f up just a walk? I sure did. Same day. The moment it began. Look at the man. Reload. Well, it's easy for you to say. <laughs> I hope I look as sexy as I feel. Can I just have a minute to think about this without. You telling me what to do? Did it stall? <laughs> I'll be the last action hero. Good. Come on. <laughs> I've always been a straight A student. First year violin. No smoking, no drinking, no cursing. F you. Today is a fluffy sh day. <laughs> How's my ass taste, bitch? Holy fuck, fucking fuck face, fuckity fuck. <laughs> oh, just would casually. Yeah. <laughs> My style. <laughs> okay. I told you I'll be back. Well, I have a big surprise for all of you tonight. I'm excited that I can announce that my old friend, a fantastic actress, a badass, is joining the Netflix family in one of my favorite shows. And I know that you love this show too. She sent a video, and I want you to watch this video. So enjoy your time. And have a great, great weekend, okay? Bye bye. See you all. Hasta la vista. Arnold. 
Thank you so much for getting this video to To Doom. I am Linda Hamilton, and I am so excited to share this news with you. I'm joining the cast for Stranger Things 5. I don't know how to be a fangirl and an actress at the same time. I'm gonna work on that. So, good to see you, Arnold. Let's get dinner soon. And everyone else, I'll see you in Hawkins. amazing way to introduce our film, Heart of Stone. Heart of Stone is a cinematic, globetrotting, <laughs> spy thriller, to, uh, but it also grapples with finding humanity in a technology-dependent world. My character, Kea Dhawan, is after what we call the heart, an incredibly powerful AI that can predict the future, as you've seen here. Rachel Stone has to protect her cover as an MI6 agent alongside Parker and the rest of the team while working to find and stop Kia. And the fate of the world will depend on who gets the heart first. Oh my God, this movie is truly incredible. It's intense. There are so many incredible action sequences. And stunning locations around the world. And True. a pretty great cast, if I do say so myself. <laughs> ah, thank you. Yeah, thank welcome. you. Please you're do. Welcome. Please do. Uh, we had an incredible time shooting this movie with our amazing cast and crew, which makes me wonder if you, Jamie, Jamie. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Sorry. <laughs> Do you have like a favorite moment you can re you can recall from shooting this um, film? To be honest, I think the entirety of making this film with you guys 
uh, getting to travel the world, uh, put all of our love and effort into this movie. I love you too. Um, there's so much action in this movie. There's so much excitement in it. We cannot wait to show this movie to you. <laughs> love you. Okay, so this movie takes place literally all over the world, okay? From the Italian Alps to the Sahara Desert to Iceland. Gal. Yes. What was your favorite location? Honestly, between ice. First of all, if everyone are gonna watch this movie and we get lucky to shoot another movie, I think we know where the next movie is going to be. I'm just saying. But between Iceland and England and Morocco and all and Lisbon and all the different locations we filmed, they all have their own magic. It's, it's hard to choose. That's true. Um. We love you. We love you. Um, <laughs> Rachel Stone might be one of my favorite new action stars. Uh, Just mine? What, yeah. Uh, what do you think Alia makes Rachel Stone so special? What makes Rachel Stone special? Okay, tough one. Or oh, the fact that she's tough, but she's also sensitive. The fact that she's sharp, but she's also soft around the edges. But. What I love most about Rachel Stone is that she's a wonderful woman. <laughs> okay, so on that wonderful note, I think it's time to finally give you a little taste of what we've been talking about up here. So here is the official worldwide debut of the trailer for Heart, Heart of Stone. Stone. Ciao, Brazil! Goodbye, Brazil. You know what you signed up for? No friends. No relationships. What we do is too important. When governments fail, the only thing left is the charter. The most highly trained agents. It's a bigger operation. No political leanings. What's with all the speculation? No national allegiances. Time to make a statement. Working together to keep peace in a turbulent world. Time to free my mind of limitation. How many in the welcome party? Six of them. Vanessa Majors, that's my former reparations. They said you can't slide your interest into the nation. Hardly seems fair. She developing a sense of humor. Hey! All right. Is what gives the charter its power. We can crash a market or drop a plane out of the sky. If you own the heart, you own the world. This is what I mean. Jeff, I need your help. Charting exit route. We've been breached. What's happening? Our systems are offline. We've lost the heart. And now you answer to me. You're compromised. Don't know if you can be trusted. I'm standing you down, Rachel. I don't care. They have no idea what they're capable of. I need to shut it all down. Showtime! Woo! This is what I mean. Yeah. 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 You think you know everything, but the world is about to see the truth. Heart or no heart, I'm coming for you. Chance of success just plummeted. Only because you've got no imagination.
first show, everyone. I think you said you wanted to take your shoes off on stage. So do you want to do that, like last minute thing? Okay, man, my feet hurt. My feet voice hurt. is still lost. Chase, you know what? It was a you, dare. It you, was a dare. I'll do it. Do it. Do it. I don't care. Just taking them off. No shoes. Who needs them? A diva tá confortável. <laughs> We're great. Anyways, before uh, Chase totally exposed me. Sorry. <laughs> thank you to all the Netflix fans around the world for watching. And, of course, to this beautiful crowd of lovely people from Sao Paulo. Did you guys have a good time at To Doom 23? Wow, what an incredible night it's been with so many surprises and so many appearances. From not one, but two Queen Charlottes. And like, at least like four John Boyegas. And we had the Witcher himself, Henry Cavill. And now Flix, Chief Action Officer Arno Schwarzenegger introducing his new show, Fubar. Speaking of action, how about all those massive new action movies we got coming? We have Heart of Stone. We have Lift. We have Rebel Moon and Extraction 2. And don't forget Extraction 3 currently in the works. And of course, so many shows we can't wait to see, but did get a glimpse of, like our first ever look at One Piece. Come on, anime weeb with me, let's go. And Avatar, the last airbender. And three body problem. Okay, all right. You know, we don't have time to recap all of Netflix's amazing series right now, but I do have to say, ah. I'm gonna miss Never Have I Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Never Have I Ever, y'all. And also, how excited I am to see the new season of Back to 15. Thank you! And of course, don't forget about um, season four of uh, Outer Banks. Thank you again. Obrigada, meus primos, to all the fans for your undying love and support. Obrigada, de verdade. You're the reason for all of this. E a gente ama vocês. And of course, don't forget to add all these new shows and films that you want to see onto your own Netflix list. We will see you guys again soon. Thank you so much. Ciao. event last all year at todoom.com netflix's official home for fandom incredible luck news interviews videos and more go behind the street at todoom.com